So now as we're digging through the nest and we gotta first locate where the actual eggs are, she's got a quite a, a quite a good sized mound here. Attention, the actions taken in this video are being conducted by our trained team of zookeeper staff. Our licensed zoological facility prioritizes the health and wellness of our collection, staff, and visitors. Do not attempt this at home. A fan favorite amongst our species of New World crocodilians are our pair of Morlets crocodiles. Over the last few weeks, we've noticed our adult female Morticia has become increasingly aggressive, and the croc team concludes she has laid a clutch of eggs. Morlet's crocodiles like these are unique for being the only crocodile on this side of the world that builds mound nests. If you'll notice on her nest, she kind of digs a hole, but not a real deep one, and then she ends up piling sand on top, and she actually makes a mound, almost like a hill, where uh, the um, Nile crocodiles, they'll actually get in the sand, and dig a pit and then um, cover it, but they'll keep the, the, the at ground level trying to disguise the nest. I think it has to do where the habitat is. Morticia's laid for a number of years in a row now. Uh, she only's had one bad year where she had just a couple of hatch. Uh, half the uh, babies actually go to the Dallas World Aquarium because Morticia is actually on loan to go with uh, Morty, our boy. Uh, there, so we split the babies and half of them will go over to a uh, Dallas World Aquarium. They're in Dallas and once they're hatched and we get them head started. Um, she's not going to let me anywhere near that nest. Um, the only thing that's protecting me right now is this fence because if it wasn't here, I would be in big trouble. We will have to get the team together. We usually have a quick little meeting about what everybody's position and what everybody's role is because I'm the one on there on the ground, on my hands and knees. If she can get through the barrier that we're gonna create, my life's in danger and I could be in trouble. Uh, we will use some wooden shields and we'll gently and slowly back her off that nest, giving me enough room and allowing me to go in there and now carefully dig those eggs out of the ground. Or try not to step on the nest. That's right. Okay, here we go. Now she has a, a male, her partner Morty, who's in there. I don't care where he's at in the enclosure and I don't, I don't worry about him at this point because Morty is also not allowed near the nest where the babies are, uh, the eggs are laid basically. So we do have to pay attention to Morty at, as well a little bit, but not immediately around the nest. He's not allowed near there. It's only uh, for her right now. So. Yeah, right there, right there, right there. Watch where you're stepping. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, Kale, lay your board down for a sec. Now that the croc team has Morticia boarded in, Dan can go in to retrieve the eggs. So now as we're digging through the nest and we gotta first locate where the actual eggs are, she's got a quite a, a quite a good sized mound here. We will first locate, the, the hardest thing kinda is finding that first egg without damaging it because you don't know exactly where it's in, in the nest. So once we can s slowly uncover uh, the nest and find the first egg, um, all the others will be uh, tightly grouped somewhere in that area. So we know to be very careful once we reach that first egg and uh, we will carefully uh, brush the sand off and um, excavate each egg one at a time. Reptile eggs, once they've been laid, uh, ultimately you don't want to rotate or move them. There's gonna be a little air pocket at the top of the egg, which the embryo is basically gonna start from at that point. Uh, even though they were freshly laid, we don't wanna rotate them or turn them around. Can't move reptile eggs too much, because you could actually kill the baby inside. Carefully uh, take the egg from the nest and then we'll carefully place it into a container and then we'll be able to safely transport that container into what we have as our incubation room and then we will get ready and we will set up the eggs uh, for incubation at that point. So typically in this situation, every boy that we hatch, we want to hatch at least two girls. So we would call that 1.2, one boy, two girls. We will wait about um, 65 to 85 days. Now the boys will be incubated at a slight higher temperature. Uh, between 87 and about 91 to 92 will produce boys, and below 87 uh, will produce females. Now Arizona is much different than the wild habitat for the Morlets crocodile. 
These guys are found throughout the Yucatan Peninsula and are native to the countries of Mexico, Belize, and Guatemala. To learn more about how these crocodiles reproduce in the wild, we're gonna go to Mexico to look for this species in its natural habitat. Let's check it out. Welcome to the Yucatan Peninsula. The Mayan jungle's impenetrable fortress of towering canopies and crystalline cenotes are teeming with a colorful variety of life forms, ranging from birds to mammals to crocodiles. And I won't settle for just any crocodile. I'm on the hunt for the most famous crocodile in the Yucatan. And if I'm gonna have a hope of seeing her, I'm gonna have to learn to navigate her underwater world. Here I am, deep in the crocodile's lair. All around me there are tarpon, turtles, cichlid, and schools of small tetra. This entire pool is a complex ecosystem with a crocodile sitting on top. As we approach a narrow canyon, my guide Vincent gives me the signal to move slowly. My heart fills with anticipation with the hope that a croc is waiting on the other side. We pass through the corridor of limestone boulders and mangroves, and Vincent spots something up ahead. As we approach, I see the iconic osteoderms of a crocodile tail hanging over a rock. This is Panchita, formerly known as Poncho, and she is an adult Morlets crocodile that has called this cenote home for four years. She's being shy, and so Vincent signals me to fall back. The encounter was brief, but impactful, and my heart is racing. But just as we've made it back to the corridor of mangroves, something remarkable happens. Soaring off of her perch like a dragon, Panchita uses her long, rudder-like tail to propel herself overhead. It is beyond surreal to see this species in its natural habitat, especially after working with the ones back at the sanctuary. We take a few more moments to enjoy her company before heading back to the opening of the cenote. Now that we've met, I can't help but ponder a few questions about Panchita. She is an ideal size for a wild breeding Morlets female, measuring approximately four to five feet. So why isn't she currently guarding a nest like Morticia is back at PHS? This is a question that I hope my guide Carlos can help me answer. Panchita was missing for two months? Two, three months, two, yeah. Two, three months. And so she just got back. And I, I love how you put it in the sense that, you know, when you're gone on vacation for a while and you come back, you just stay put yeah, for yeah, a period yeah. of time. So she only showed up again four days ago. So I just arrived here yesterday. I'm feeling very lucky. Uh, it's almost like Panchita wants to see me. Nah. So, yeah. <laughs> came back right for this. Yeah, she knew. She loves the camera. That's, That's cool. right. Yeah, she's a diva. Panchita has taken this annual two to three month vacation before. In fact, she will take this hiatus at around the same time every year, starting earlier in spring and ending at the end of July. This bears a similarity to Morticia's timeline from when she laid her clutch of 37 eggs to the approximate date we suspect them to hatch. The differences between the egg laying processes of these two animals are largely dependent on the environmental catalysts in their respective habitats. Um, she's basically um, uh, adjusted to our weather, cycle, climate, whatever it is here that she's comfortable with. And that month of June and that week of June is when she will lay her eggs almost like clockwork every year she's done it for us. And we can watch her when we get close in that month of June. The time Panchita was missing from the cenote was likely spent guarding her own brood of eggs. During this time, she will avoid leaving her nest for any reason, even to eat, which likely explains why no one sees her swimming during this time of the summer. This means she's probably pretty hungry, so Carlos and I return to the cenote at nightfall, an ideal time for a crocodile to hunt. And there she is, drifting inconspicuously through the moonlit cenote water. I can't believe my eyes, and for the moment, the only thing I can focus on is the black, slender silhouette floating above. It has been truly rewarding to compare these two crocodile mothers and share the differences between their reproductive patterns. It is observations like these that gives us insight into how the behavior and ecology of our collection contrasts with their wild counterparts.
Thanks for watching that video. If you want to see more content like that, don't forget to subscribe and tune in for future ones. Like these.